as Windows Vista starts up, we'll get the splash screen. We have the login screen with our name, and we want to put our password into this login screen. And we'll click the Go button, and that's it. We are now up and running in Windows Vista. It prepares the desktop for the first time use. And that's all the configurations we'll need to do to get this up and running. Now, obviously, at this point, you want to perform your post installation tests and checks. But generally speaking, the installation process or the primary part of the installation process is really over at this point. And here's our Windows Vista desktop, a beautiful thing. We've already gotten our background that we chose. It's loading up the new drivers. It's even found that there are updates out on the net something that we'll certainly want to go in and make sure our operating system is up to the latest version. But now we've got our Start menu at the bottom, and we can go through the process of doing what we'd like to do with our operating system. Now that the operating system is up and running, it would be nice to know, does it work? We need to know what to do after we've done the major installation of Windows Vista. So let's go down our list. We want to be sure first, does it work? Is this able to boot up? Are we able to get to the desktop? Are there any error messages that pop up during the boot process? We want to be sure that our system is running optimally right out of the gate. If there's problems at this point, there's going to be problems later. So we need to resolve that now. Many organizations, especially if, if they have a large number of computers, will have a burn-in time. They'll set up the machine. They'll turn it on. They'll let it run overnight. When they come back in the morning, they'll then distribute those systems. They feel that if it's going to fail, it's really going to fail relatively early in the life cycle. So let's get it done right away. Let's make sure that it works perfectly. We'll let it burn in a little bit, and then we'll put it on people's desktops. You also want to be sure that you're running the latest service packs, that you've gotten all the security patches in place, and driver updates. Now, generally speaking, that first section when you're doing a Windows update, it's going to go through and check all of those things for you automatically. So at the very minimum, run your Windows update, check for those security alerts that come up at the bottom of the screen, and make sure that the operating system itself, the fundamental aspects of the operating system, are fully patched with all of the security updates and all of the major application pieces for the OS. You can see at the very bottom of this, there is application updates. I want to be sure that if you're running Windows Vista and you're running an older application from a third party, that you've checked with that third party and you know if there's an update that you will need to be able to run in Windows Vista. Most applications don't require an update, but there are a few out there, very specific, very specialized applications that may require that you do an upgrade of the app once you have upgraded to Windows Windows Vista. So you want to be careful and check for that. Maybe do a test of your applications. Make sure the ones that are important to be running on this desktop that were running in the older version or the other operating system that you were using are now working properly in Windows Vista as well. Let's review this Windows Vista installation that we've done. Let's start with our first question, which is how much disk space is minimally required to install Windows Vista? If you recall, that's what we set up our virtual machine for. And that answer is 20 gigabytes. You probably are going to want more than that once you get the machine up and running. But that's what you need at a bare minimum. Second question, how can you check to verify that your computer will run Windows Vista? Well, of course, you want to run the Windows Vista Upgrade Advisor, something that can be downloaded from Microsoft's website and run on your computer. And lastly, which post-installation process updates your computer to interface more efficiently to the hardware. Of one, all of those things that we looked at, one of those options really did a hardware check and made sure that your hardware was running properly. And that's the driver updates process. Again, you can usually kick that off with a Windows update to have all of the latest drivers downloaded for your machine. Well, that covers everything you'll need to know for the installation process of Windows Vista coming from our 220-701 section 3.3. We've got a lot more videos on our website, plenty of messages in our message boards. You can always send me a message directly. Just visit our website at freeaplus.com.